All right, while the Olympics have captured TV eyeballs for the next two weeks, a typical sports fan is warming up the football these days. Even in this day of the Internet where most of the information is free, there's still a demand from football junkies for their news of the favorite team. I was in a grocery store the other night and saw a rack of sports magazines going for as much as 10 bucks a pop. So I checked them out and they were filled with mostly last year's statistics. There is no question college football and the NFL remain wildly popular, but consider this, folks. Eight of the 11 major college conferences lost numbers in regular season attendance last year, including the SEC and the Big Ten. SEC still averaged nearly 76,000 fans a game, highest in the nation, but the lowest for the conference in four years. NFL is down 4.5% in average attendance since 2007. While attendance is declining, television ratings are out of the roof. They're unbelievable. They're at an all-time high. Football fans are choosing the comfort of their homes, and why wouldn't they? These overpriced tickets, coupled with parking and concessions, are a major ripoff. It still sticks in my crawl to spend 27 bucks for parking at a Chiefs preseason game. It's nothing but a glorified practice. Look. You can invest in a nice HD TV for what it would cost to buy a couple of season tickets. The NFL knows it has an issue. For the first time, the league is providing wireless internet in every stadium in the country and replays of controversial calls will now be shown in the stadiums. The league will never admit it, but fantasy football and gambling are the primary reasons this sport is at its apex. You lose either of those, and the NFL won't have to worry about empty seats. It's all about the number of eyeballs watching at home that continue to drive this sport. And make no mistake here, folks, television pays the freight. Without the so-called action on the games, you'd be surprised at how quickly fans can lose interest. That's Jack Smack.